Hello, my name is Eric Scheninger, and I'm the principal at New Milford High School in New Milford, New Jersey. Many people know me as Principal Twitter. You can find me at, at NMHS underscore principal. I'm the co-author of two books and recently the author of Digital Leadership, Changing Paradigms for Changing Times with a forward by Young Zhao. Today I'd like to talk about digital leadership. Leadership today is no different than it was yesterday or many, many years ago. What's changed is how leaders move schools forward in the digital age. Society is changing, technology is rapidly changing, and as a result, our learner has fundamentally changed. They are wired differently. Digital leadership is about a strategic mindset, set of skills and behaviors that are employed to initiate sustainable change leading to school transformation. It's about creating relevant, meaningful, authentic cultures of teaching and learning where schools become institutions that mirror the world that we're preparing our students to be successful in. You know, in my work here as principal at New Milford High School, you know, I've basically identified you know, what I call the pillars of digital leadership, the foundational elements for initiating and anticipating needed changes. It's about looking at the characteristics of effective school leadership and doing what we do better. The pillars of digital leadership include communications, public relations, branding, professional learning, student engagement, learning and achievement, opportunity, and rethinking learning spaces and environments. So with a new changed growth mindset, leaders can be, begin to harness and leverage readily available digital tools to fundamentally and radically create a culture that works for students as opposed to one that works for us. Education for so long has been built based upon control, compliancy, following rules. What we need to do, what digital leaders do, is create a whole new construct that relies on giving up control and trusting our students and staff members as we together begin to co-construct knowledge and learn openly and create artifacts of learning to demonstrate conceptual mastery. I would not say that you know, New Milford has the secret to success in terms of becoming a digitally rich culture for teaching and learning. What we have done was, the fun, you know, guide, our work is guided by a fundamental question, what is best for our students? Then we focus on the why we need to change and how we're going to do, go about doing it. New Milford in itself is a shell of the institution that it once was. Our building was built in 1928. For the longest time, we based our education here, uh, we based our education here on a traditional method of schooling that was, in a sense, preparing students for an industrialized workforce. The problem is that no longer exists. So how do we create a, a new, better culture where student voice is embraced and accepted, where ubiquitous access to technology is leveraged to create uh, artifacts of learning and to allow students to follow their passions. You know, when we look at the work that we've done here, it begins with change. How have we been able to change in a short period of time? Well, it first begins with empowerment. Digital leadership is about empowering teachers and students to be the change. How do you go about doing that? Here at New Milford High School, what we did was we looked for teachers and students to embrace needed change to improve the teaching and learning culture. And we did that by giving our staff members the autonomy to follow their learning passions. We call it our professional growth period, which is sort of modeled after the Google 80-20 model for innovation. Once we, were, we took away um, and eliminated the red tape and the levels of bureaucracy and, and really gave our staff members the freedom to explore, to take calculated risks, to adapt, and we essentially remove the fear of failure, the dreaded F word in education. That's when innovation began to prosper. And that's when we ourselves 
became more cognizant of the path that we needed to create because no one was creating it for us. So over the past couple of years, we have worked here at New Milford High School to determine ways in which technology could be used to support learning, not drive instruction. We've created our own Bring Your Own Device initiative, which is now in its third year. We have students taking independent open courseware classes at Harvard, Yale, MIT, Stanford, and actually rewarding them with high school honors credit. We have our own maker space where students go to our traditional media center, but now they can tinker, invent, create, all in an effort to learn on their time. We're creating our own 3D virtual learning environment that will be the first of its kind here at New Milford High School to offer synchronous instruction whenever and whenever it's, uh, it meets the needs of our students. We utilize basically every social media tool possible because we believe here that students should be allowed to use real world tools to demonstrate knowledge and what they've learned. Because in a nutshell, once they graduate here at New Milford High School or any school in this country, they are going to be expected to utilize these tools in the real world. The secret here is simple. We determine and articulate the why and then the how. We have built our own model for professional learning here at New Milford High School that provides our teachers with the support, the tools, and the resources to be successful when it comes to technology integration. We also believe in using tools to foster and enhance essential skill sets that the, the world today demands. Those skill sets include creativity, collaboration, communication, critical thinking, problem solving, digital citizenship, media literacy, entrepreneurship, and global awareness. Speaking of global awareness, we basically relish the opportunity to connect with anyone, anywhere. And that now, since there are so many free tools that allow us to do this, we are providing experiences for our students like never before. Case in point, we routinely Skype and video conference with Holocaust survivors all over the world as part of our award-winning Holocaust study tour. Our students go to Poland, Germany, the Czech Republic in the spring, and they're video conferencing back with their peers here at New Milford High School. Today, I reached out to a NATO commanding general in Afghanistan who has agreed to video conference with our history classes. This is just a small example of the connections that we are making to make our students globally aware and to provide more of a context to the learning that should be taking place in our schools. We are more focused now on solutions instead of excuses in order to provide a learning experience that our students embrace, to create a culture that works for our students as opposed to just working for us because that's the way it's been done before or you know, this is, the how, this is how things are done, it's easy. Our style and methodologies look different. They're messy. When we look at what we're trying to accomplish here at New Milford High School, we are, in a sense, trying to create as much of a real world experience as possible. We do that in many ways, whether it be through pedagogical techniques that teachers in every department are utilizing, integrating social media based tools to allow students to demonstrate what they've learned in unique ways, or providing school branded charging stations for our student devices. In here at New Milford High School, we want a classroom, an experience, to emulate what's happening in the real world. Our students are empowered to use their mobile learning devices to enhance learning, conduct better research, and increase productivity. Our students, we kind of embraced a term, a term that we call free range learning where our students can learn anywhere at any time in our building or off school grounds. So as we continue to rewrite or recreate what we feel is in the best interest of our students, we're constantly along the way learning from our failures. And we don't see them as failures. We look at it as 
finding ways which things do not work. So by changing our mindset, we've been able to create or transform a traditional culture into one that really speaks to innovation and possibilities. Inherent in this whole entire change process is trusting our students, giving up control, and empowering them to take ownership of their learning. When students take ownership of their learning, they, they really have a more vested interest in the time that they spend here at school. And when they find the value in what they're learning, going back to Dan, Daniel Pink's work, is that they become intrinsically motivated. They find more purpose in what they're doing. They become masters, in a sense, of what they are learning and what they're uh, attempting to accomplish. And then when you give them autonomy, which is in the form of ownership, that's when the magic happens. Leading in the digital age can be scary. Fear dominates many leaders' lives, and it really inhibits the change process. We fear what we do not know or understand. That was me. Five years ago, I did not believe in social media. We basically, I worked with other staff members to create policies that prohibited and restricted students' access to their devices and basically any type of social media technology. You know, we all have those aha moments in life. And for me, in March 2009, I happened to just mistakenly read an article about Twitter. And as I was reading the article, the light bulb went on. And I saw it as an opportunity to be a better communicator with my stakeholders. That's the only reason I got on social media and everything changed. Prior to March 2009, I was not on any social media site. Once I got on Twitter and began communicating with my stakeholders, I began to lurk and learn. And what I discovered was how much I did not know. I really did not understand how to effectively integrate technology into the classroom. I had no clue on how to provide my teachers with the support and the guidance on how to integrate an array of tools. And the bottom line is, I didn't even really know the tools and methodologies that existed that many educators were using throughout the world. Twitter was a doorway. It was a doorway that eventually became a catalyst for change. It wasn't Twitter itself that was a catalyst for change. It was the people that I now connected with through my own constructed personal learning network. Once I had a personal learning network in place, I was like a sponge. I was getting all these ideas. I was motivated to work extremely hard to change the culture here at New Milford High School. So once I had begun to drink the Kool-Aid, my next step was to empower staff to want to be the change with me. I basically assembled five staff members who I thought shared my vision. We got together and I said, listen, this is my vision. I know it sounds crazy, but together I really think that we can create a better place for our students. I offered those staff members anything they needed to be successful, support, technology, time to learn, professional development opportunities. Everything was on the table and they got whatever they needed to be successful. That is how the change process started. It was the teachers that were empowered and eventually embraced this vision and put a plan into action and when the results occurred, it became a domino effect. Without any mandates or directives, that core group of teachers began to model, along with myself, we modeled the expectations that we had for other teachers, other administrators, our stakeholders, and through the modeling, support, flexibility, creating a culture that embraced calculated risk-taking, removing the fear of failure, providing learning opportunities, we created a whole new construct for teaching and learning here at New Milford High School. These new teachers were empowered, and when other colleagues and students began to experience this renaissance, it was like a tidal wave that could not be stopped. In starting with myself and those five teachers five years ago, I can now say with confidence that nearly every single staff member here, regardless of how many years they've been in education, are actively 
integrating technology effectively to enhance the teaching and learning process. We are now focused on embracing technology that allows students to demonstrate what they've learned. It's about creating artifacts aligned to learning outcomes. And we've created our own conference here called the Edscape Conference, which is now in its fifth year. That is where our teachers get the hands-on learning that they then implement the next day in the classroom. We have teacher leaders now that are working side by side on how to effectively integrate tools. Teachers are given time embedded in the school day every week. We call it our professional growth period. They get two to three 48 minute periods a week to pursue their learning passions. The majority of the teachers are utilizing that time that they've been given to integrate technology effectively, to use technology to connect, to allow students to choose the technology that they want and they are the most comfortable with to demonstrate what they've learned. Our model has now become sustained. Change has been sustained, leading to transformation. And that is the secret to how we do things here at New Milford High School.